I'm Jenna from Folk Rock Farm, and if you're tuning in, you are probably interested in starting your own garden this year. So, what I'm going to tell you today is when and how to start seeds in spring for your garden. Now, the first thing you're going to want to get is like a notebook, um, a planner, a calendar, somewhere where you can actually write down and keep in one place all the days you're going to want to start seeding stuff because it is different between different crops. Um, last year I just used this daily planner that separates it out by months and that worked out pretty well. Uh, this year I did opt to use just like a chicken calendar and that way when I look at the calendar for the day you can see that I've just wrote on each day approximately to um, start certain seeds and that just helps you keep everything organized because even myself I've been farming and gardening for eight years now and you can still lose track when you're especially when you're doing a lot so it's good to have it written down in one place where you can look and be like oh yeah I'm supposed to seed this today so if once you have somewhere to start logging when you need to start your stuff um, the next thing you're gonna have to know is your last frost date. Um, this is different from your zone so um, you could live in the same zone as somebody else but have completely different um, last frost dates and why you need to know your last frost date is because every seed you start is going to de be dependent upon uh, when that day is so there's more cool weather crops that you can start either indoors earlier or you can seed into the garden even before your last frost date and then there's warm weather crops that you do not want to start outdoors before your last frost date because they probably won't make it. You can find out your last frost date from a Google search. If you know somebody in your town or area that also gardens, you could ask them. They might know. But it's really easy to find online. Um, we live in Zone 6 in New England and we're, our last frost date is around May 11th. But um, this is just an estimate. The frost, your actual last frost might come maybe two weeks before or two weeks after that. But it's just an average, it's a rough estimate. And um, when it comes to seeding things, it's not that you have to seed them on like one specific day. There is a, a time frame where you can, like, I don't know, every a two week time frame where you can start your seeds. And even that's not the biggest deal if you start your seeds a little bit later or whatnot, you might just not get the best harvest from your plants. The tips I'm going to be sharing with you today are for the most successful garden plants. So for example, like tomatoes, you'll probably want to start indoors or buy as transplants for your garden because if you don't, you can still plant the tomato seed in your garden after the frost has passed and it will probably grow fine if conditions are otherwise met and produce a plant and have some tomatoes but because it didn't get that jump start you're going to have less tomatoes so you can but you're losing out on a lot of fruit by not starting earlier so there's two basic types of crops there's crops who prefer cool weather and there's crops that prefer warm weather um, so we're kind of like break those two apart and then within each of those categories, there's seeds that you'll want to buy transplants or start earlier indoors somewhere um, where they can get heat and sunlight and then transplant them out into the garden or um, direct seeding into the garden or direct sowing. So those are your two options. You can start them indoors in a protected environment, either with artificial light or a sunny window. Um, you might need to get a germination mat if you don't have adequate heating for them. Um, or you can buy them at a garden center as transplants and somebody already did that work for you. And same goes with the warm weather crops. There are some that are easy enough just to direct sow into the garden. And then there are some that you'll want to get as transplants to get the most yield and just have the most productive plant. Um, there's also gray areas in between where you can start a seedling indoors but you can also just put it in the garden and it might make a little bit of a difference but you can really go either way. So I'm going to be talking about all those things. So I'm going to be listing some 
of the vegetables that you might want for both of these situations. I'm not going to go over every single vegetable known to man because that will be a very long video. But um, there are guides you can find online. And I got the seed catalog from Botanical Interest, which have some great stuff. And inside they actually have an... Let's see if the camera will get it. They actually have an indoor sewing guide. And on the back, it's an outdoor sewing guide, which kind of just tells you um, how many weeks ahead you'll want to start certain crops. And they have it all laid out for you which can be seriously handy if you're trying to start a lot of different seeds. And a lot of times too, on the back of seed packets, they'll actually have the info as well. So you don't have to memorize all this. You can write it down for sure if that helps, especially all in one place. But so let's start off with cool weather crops because those are going to be the seeds that you actually seed first because they can be planted before frost or during the last couple weeks of frost. And let's start off, and I'll start off by listing some of the crops that do better as transplanted crops. And these include onions, leeks, celery, fennel, cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage. And the reason why these do better as transplants is because a lot of them have a really long growing season. Um, leeks and celery are over 120 days, I believe. Maybe even like 180. I don't remember exactly, but very long growing season. So the earlier jump you can get on them, then the better product you'll have to harvest. And onions too. Um, I know specifically the region we live in, we have to uh, plant long day onions. And what that means is those onions will start to bulb or form their onion when the daylight is a certain amount of hours a day. Once the daylight hits that, the onion will start bulbing. So the reason why we want to start the onion so early is so that they have a chance to grow their leaves and become as strong as possible before they start to bulb. If they don't make nice, tall, healthy leaves, they won't make you a nice, fat onion. And that's what we all want. And then for certain brassicas such as cauliflower, cabbage, and broccoli, getting that start before the weather gets too hot will greatly benefit them. They do not like warm weather. They go to seed really quick, so you might end up with like small heads or heads that have started to open up and flower. So getting that jump in early spring, which is the weather they love, is really good to help you get a nice big head of broccoli or cauliflower so that you can harvest it before the weather gets too hot in the summer. Now let's talk about direct seeding or outdoor sowing for cool weather crops. And these are crops that um, you can follow the guidelines, but you can usually put them in the garden even before your last frost date. Again, it's going to be specific to the crop. For example, carrots are about two to four weeks before your last frost date. Um, some crops might be just as soon as you can like get into the soil when it's not frozen anymore. And then there's the either category. So these are crops that you can either transplant or direct sow. It really doesn't matter whatever your preference is. And these are herbs like, and some of these crops include carrots, radishes, peas, fava beans, beets, and turnips. These are crops that I would say definitely go with direct seeding into the garden. Although you could start these earlier indoors as transplants, it's really not necessary. All these things sow pretty easily when you put them into the garden. Um, and if you do buy them from garden centers, you're probably buying something that someone literally seeded like two days to five days prior. So it really doesn't give them any sort of jump. Oftentimes, uh, when you do buy transplants like that, um, they have a lot of seeds in one cell. So you either have to like tease the seeds apart and give them adequate spacing, or you have to thin, which means remove some of the plants because, I mean, usually they come in a tiny little cell like that and they jam pack like 20 seeds in there. And in that spacing, you really only want like one or two seeds. So it still requires a little bit of effort and you can still do it for sure. Um, I know carrots particularly don't like to be transplanted, but um, you could get away with those other crops, but it's so easy to just plant them right into the garden that I, I think it's a little ridiculous to buy them as transplants. And you'll save money because seed is cheaper than transplants and you get a lot more. So 
thyme, rosemary, parsley, uh, mint, and then any sort of greens like baby kale, arugula, mustard, any sort of just like salad greens like that or lettuces. Um, you can definitely do either transplants or directly into the garden. Usually I recommend if you're trying to grow um, like a full head of lettuce or a like full size kale plant which actually does take up a decent amount of room like probably 12 to 18 inches. And then maybe start with a transplant just to give that crop a little bit of a jump start especially when it comes to fighting like weeds in the garden and whatnot. Um, if you're trying to grow them as baby greens it's super easy to just sow right into the garden and just eliminate that first step. And then they'll be more closely planted too, so you won't have to weed as much in between the plants. Alright, and next let's talk about warm weather crops. Um, the warm weather crops that I recommend transplanting are definitely tomatoes, pepper, and eggplant for sure. These crops really, really benefit from being started earlier, and they do not like the cold. So you really can't put them out until the danger of frost has passed. And the warm weather crops that I would recommend direct sowing would be squash or pumpkins. Um, they're just so easy to grow from seed. They germinate really well. And they don't really like to be transplanted. They get a little finicky. It can stunt them. It can disrupt the root system. Beans are also super easy to start from seed directly in the garden. And then the crops that I think you can get away with either are melons, cucumber, and zucchinis. Um, all three of these could also be started in the garden directly. Um, that's kind of gardener's choice there. They can also be kind of finicky transplanters, so you want to just be careful when you're transplanting them out into the garden. Uh, you want to make sure they're, like, they're pulling from the soil nice, or you just you handle them a little bit more tenderly. But same thing, they also germinate super easily, so they're pretty easy to start in the garden. And you might get like a week or two head start if you start them earlier, but they're so frost tender that you really can't start them much sooner than when you would be putting them out into the garden anyways. And you don't really want to leave them in a pot for too long, so those I would probably recommend direct sowing, but if you really want to get a jump on the season, then just be careful transplanting those. And other crops that you could do either direct sow or transplant with would be herbs again, so like basil, cilantro, dill. Super easy to direct sow into the garden, but also super easy to transplant. They're pretty non-fussy, so you can really do it whichever you'd like with those. Now even though there are cool weather and warm weather plants, there are certain crops that you can kind of plant throughout the season and this is called succession planting. It means that you know every few weeks or whatever the time frame might be you start the seed again and that way you get a continuous harvest throughout the season once the first round of plants kind of starts to die out a little bit and not produce so much. Uh, you can rely on the next upcoming successions of plants to start really bearing well. Um, a lot of crops you can do this with, especially like zucchini, cucumbers are major ones, salad greens, you can get a lot coming at you. Um, you can do like early spring brassicas, broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage type of deal, and you can also start them late summer for a fall crop planting. But I didn't want to go like too far into that today just to keep this video short. Um, so want to just focus on the spring start times. But it's just reassuring to know that if you don't start your plant specifically on time, it's really not that big of a deal. Still get it out in the garden, you can still get fruit from it, and it might even extend your season. So once you have an idea of when to start all your seeds, and you're looking at your frost day, and you got your, your some sort of guideline or your seed packets, or go online and Google when you're supposed to start certain seeds, this is when I would grab a calendar or some sort of planner, figure out your frost date, and then you're going to count backwards. So if it's four weeks prior to your last frost date, obviously count four weeks backwards from then. And write on your calendar or your planner, that's the day you're supposed to start your seed. So now let's talk about how to start your seed. And the general rule of thumb is to, for seed depth, is to plant your seed about twice the width of your seed. For example, this is a fava bean seed. And that's going to be planted much deeper than this. 
tiny little carrot seed. So this will probably go, I don't know, one eighth of an inch into the soil. Whereas this fava bean is going to go an inch and a half to two inches into the soil. And then something this size, like a shell pea, is going to go just about an inch into the soil. And talking about soil, that brings me to my next tip, which is what to start your seeds in. If you're direct sowing into the garden, you want to make sure that the soil you're putting your seed into is loose and gently worked. Um, try to be rid of all weeds that could be competing with it, but they, they will come back. Um, but to just try to get a nice clean slate of nice, rich, loose soil on top. You don't want anything too chunky in there. You don't want too many rocks or wood chips or leaves or pine needles. You want to make sure that it's, it's pretty loose and well worked. If you're going to start indoors, you can use either a germination mix or a potting soil. Um, they'll sell this at any local garden center or Home Depot or Lowe's. And either works. Um, if you use potting soil, just make sure it's not too chunky, like it doesn't have like huge bits of wood and whatever in it. This could um, be detrimental to smaller seeds. Larger seeds should be fine. But if there are chunks, you can kind of just like pick them out. Um, or you can use germination mix, which is specifically designed to germinate seeds. So it's loose, it's thin, it's especially well for smaller seeds. Um, it has usually vermiculite or peat moss in it to help retain water. Um, if you use germination mix, a lot of times it's just kind of like a base medium. It doesn't really have a lot of nutrients or fertilizer in it. So after your seeds have germinated and kind of used all their like seed stored power. Um, you'll have to start fertilizing in about a week um, and then just follow your fertilizer instructions. Uh, if you use potting soil, they usually begin with some sort of fertilizers mixed in, so you might get away with no, without having to fertilize for, you know, the first couple weeks or so, but eventually, if they stay in a pot, you will eventually have to start fertilizing those as well. And you just follow the same seed depth requir requirements. Just do it in the little container or whatever your your tray might look like. Uh, you might notice that on your seed packet it might have a certain temperature range, which is the ideal temperature for germination. Um, this isn't to say your seed won't germinate if it's a bit cooler or a bit warmer, but that's just the range which the seed germinates the best and more reliably. So if you want to regulate that, you can get a germination mat, which is something you can buy, and you stick a temperature gauge into the soil and the mat will turn on when the temperature needs to reach a certain temperature you want to set it at. Um, I've also found that just plenty of sun seems to do the, do the trick when it comes to germinating, or if you put um, saran wrap or plastic wrap over the wet soil or some sort of plastic dome. It, it kind of creates a little mini greenhouse effect that helps to warm the soil and the seed and helps it germinate. So any of these options are good options. You want to try to maintain a level temperature while you're germinating. Um, most seeds don't want temperature fluctuations. They want like a nice steady temperature around like 60 to 70 degrees. So even a sunny windowsill in your house should be adequate to start most seeds, but if you find yourself having difficulty with that, then I definitely recommend a heat mat and or saran wrap or a dome. That being said, if you do use saran wrap or a dome, make sure to take it off as soon as the seeds germinate because or pop out of the soil uh, because you can actually cook your seeds from it getting too hot in there and you just want nice airflow and whatnot. Another thing to keep in mind while you're germinating your seeds is to make sure the soil stays moist. Um, it doesn't have to be so damp that when you pick it up, like, water spills out. Like, you just want to keep it levelly moist, um, like, like a wet sponge would feel, you know? So, so just keep an eye on it when you're starting your trays and make sure there's always an even level of moisture. As soon as your seedling sprouts, try to give it as much sun as possible. So keep it in a sunny windowsill. You might have to rig up some sort of mini greenhouse or cold frame or something just to keep your seedlings safe and out of the wind and direct sun while you're still trying to baby them a little bit. And then we'll get into hardening off your plants, but that's a topic for a different day because I think this video is already getting pretty long. So I hope you found this 
video informative and helpful and if you liked it please stay tuned because I have more um, beginning gardener stuff coming up and we have a lot of exciting stuff on the way we've actually been building our greenhouse where I'm trying to get my seedlings out there right now they're all smushed into my window and I can't possibly fit another plant in there and the house plants are getting a little mad at me but um, we're almost there so once that's done I'm definitely going to show you guys and share that with you and yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions, contribute to the conversation here, what do you do to start your seeds, or where have you had problems, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. So thanks for watching, we'll see you next time.